So we've got the uh, closed putty, go to the configuration and, and make the ATO enable. So to show you that, we'll just go over the Reef Pie of the 140. That's my other Raspberry Pi that I got kind of working on here. Uh, and then we'll go to configuration. Make sure that your auto top off is selected here and then update after you're done. And now we want to create a connector for your float switch. So you're going to create an inlet. Give it a name, sump float, ATO float, whatever you want it to be, float one, and then add the information there. And then if you want to see it work, which essentially you're going to want to do, you're going to want to create an outlet for it to control. Uh, so you can create an outlet, you can make it a, just a test one, uh, make sure it's on a pin that's not associated with anything because you don't want to create an outlet that's also an inlet because you could end up frying your pie. So make sure it's just an empty pin or actually connected to the pin that your, uh, that your say, relay controlled outlet for your sump, uh, for your ATO pump is going to be on. And then <coughs> we want to come over and we save it and update it and all that kind of stuff. Now we'll have the ATO functionality in here and we'll have the equipment set up here. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, we want to add the equipment pump. So we're going to name, uh, I think I already have one in here. Oh no, I don't. Yeah, ATO pump. So I've got one here, ATO pump. You can make an ATO pump or whatever you want. And then we're going to come over here to the auto top off section. And this is where we're going to add the functionality for our float switch. So you give it a name, say it's the auto top off pump, select the inlet that you determined over there in the configuration. The frequency that you want Reef Pi to check that switch to see if it's activated, and then enable or disabled for it, and then the pump that you want it to control, say like the auto top off pump. Uh, I've already got an example of that here, and this is actually the graph of it working and being tested. And then what happens is when that switch is flicked by the level of water in the sump, then it will flick the equipment uh, that is connected to. So right now over in the other room my float switch is, is in an on position and that pump is now on and it's doing its thing. It's pump it's it's technically supposed to be pumping water into the sump system right now, but there is none of that. This is just a test. So yeah, that's it. That's about it. That's it. Testing. That's it's done. That's how you hook it up. That's how you program the software. That's how you get the pull-up resistor. I know it sounds a little complicated, but when you go through these steps one at a time, step by step, as these instructions go, you'll see the logic of it and how easy it is. And you'll just be like, oh, yeah, that was simple. That's, that's no big deal. It, it looks a little complicated, but it's really not. So yeah, that's the float switch. Sorry I've been a little late in putting these videos up. I've had a lot going on. Uh, hopefully I'll get the next one up in, the, in a day or so, which will probably be the temperature. And then we'll do the relays and the power box. All right, later.